I really like shell challenges and I do a lot of them over on my Twitch channel. Around once a month-ish, we usually build a new shell and then host a whole challenge together as a community. I will occasionally post these on YouTube as well, but I realized it's been a while since I last posted one of those here on my YouTube channel. So in that video a few days ago, I asked you all if you wanted to see that speed build and a lot of you said yes. So let me quickly explain what on earth a shell challenge is. Basically, when I host these shell challenges, I'll build like a box shell of a building. They're typically pretty random. They sometimes have some kind of weird walls and weird shapes. And then I put this shell on the gallery and ask you all to try and turn it into something. The rules are pretty open-ended. You can pretty much do anything. You can rotate it. You can move it on the lot. Obviously you can add platforms and foundations and fences and all of that. The only thing that you can't do is change the existing walls. The whole idea of a shell challenge is that the shell of the building, so all of these existing exterior walls have to stay the same. And it's kind of fun because we all have the same starting point, but it gets turned into a million different things. I hosted this one on Twitch a couple weeks ago, so I've already done the tours and stuff for this. But if you like the idea of shell challenges, I've done a lot of it here on YouTube, so I can link some down below for you. And I'm gonna host another one on Twitch in a couple of weeks, so make sure you follow me there so you don't miss it. But I will post that one on YouTube as well, so we can do a whole big shell challenge together again as a community. It's been a while since we did a big one over on YouTube, but anyway, hopefully the the rules and the basics of the shell challenge make sense to you. And now I want to dive in and show you what I built with this shell. I always joke that shell challenges are kind of a trust the process sort of build, and I often have to bulldoze a couple of times before I get it right. It's just a weird way of building because you're kind of working backwards and all of my usual build tricks don't really apply here. So with this one, I decided to try and build this lot in Mount Komorebi, and I made a serious effort to use the wrong side as the front of the build, which sounds kind of weird when I say it because there's not really a right side for the front of the build. The whole point of a shell is that you can rotate it and kind of do it anywhere that you want, but there is oftentimes, at least when I build the shell, a side that makes the most sense as the front of the building, and I wanted to intentionally try to not use the side that makes the most sense. So in this case, I think the left side would have been a better front. With the way the diagonal is laid out, I feel like it just would have made more sense as the front, so I intentionally tried tried to push myself to not use it. I instead used it almost like the side of the house. It's kind of the entrance to the backyard. This is a weird lot because it's like a horizontal 20 by 15 lot, so the backyard is actually in the side of the house. And I tried, emphasis on tried, to have a slightly Japanese inspired style to this building. Obviously this is not the most accurate or realistic building in the world. The biggest problem is that it's a shell, so I can't change the exterior walls. With any normal build, you can sort of adjust things to make it work how you want it to. In this case, we have to do the opposite and adjust the style <laughs> to work with how the build is. Roofing in particular is often really, really difficult in shell challenges because you're stuck with what you have. The way that I normally build, I'll like, you know, extend some random walls or like add a little bump out to make the roof more interesting. And you just can't do that here. So <laughs> that's why it's so hard for me. And before you laugh, yes, the roof is blue. I know, I know, <laughs> all of my builds end up being blue. I get it, it's funny. Literally just last week I made a whole video on YouTube where I built four blue suburban houses all on one lot. It's like an entire neighborhood on just one lot. It was all kind of a joke about embracing the blue meme and like how all my builds are blue. Yeah, this one is blue too, but it's not a blue suburban, okay? <laughs> it might be blue, but it is most definitely not a suburban. This honestly is a welcome change from last week's build. I posted like an hour long speed build last Sunday, so it's kind of nice to have a slightly shorter one today. It's still like almost half an hour long this video, but it's it's not an hour long, so <laughs> it's a breath of fresh air, right? But if I'm being honest, the roof color was kind of like the main inspiration for the build. I wanted to have a kind of fun and bright roof and then a more neutral tone across the rest of the building. There's not a ton of bright swatches on those roof textures from Snowy Escape. They're like all brown and gray tones except for this bright blue one. There is a reddish one and a greenish one, but the blue, the blue just looked the best, okay? And then I based everything else on that lightish wood tone that matched the roof so well. I was actually really surprised to see that the fence from the Perfect Patio Stuff Pack really matched. I was kind of struggling with fencing because Snowy Escape has a couple of fences, but they don't really fit that well. They're a bit shorter, and I wanted a taller privacy fence for this backyard. So it was kind of a miracle when that one fit the color scheme so nicely. 
sheet. And then I went around and I put windows everywhere. We've got a lot of columns everywhere. I used a lot of the snowy escape, like architectural details, things like the spandrels and the foundations and the fences all over the place. Mount Komorebi is actually one of my favorite worlds in all of The Sims 4. I don't build here all that often because I just feel like I, I did the official builds for Snowy Escape. So they asked me to do like the official real builds that come in the world in Snowy Escape. And because I did that and I spent like literally months working on those builds and like hours and hours and hours on each of them, I don't even want to know if I would be horrified to know how long each of those builds actually took me. But I just feel like I've built in Snowy Escape so much. When in reality, it's actually been a bit since I last did a Snowy Escape build. It just feels to me <laughs> that I'm building it all the time. But the pack came out like years ago. So it, anyway, I, I still love this world. I love the build stuff in here. I think it has some of the best build items in the entire game. And I think the world is really beautiful. And I'm not biased when I say that. It just is a nice world. I think all of the wood tones that come in this pack are really pretty. This whole house, you'll see once I start furnishing it, it has a very like calming color scheme with like the light toned wood and these light blue accents that I added in. And as you can see, the house itself is really, really small. The actual shell of the build is small enough to be a tiny home if you wanted it to be. It's like 95 tiles, I think. This house is not a tiny home because I added so much platform space on it. It's got way more than that 100 tile max, but it is a two bedroom, one bathroom house. So kind of to walk you through the layout of the house real quick, we've got a small living room downstairs kind of facing the diagonal wall. I put a bedroom room for a kid downstairs. We've got a little kitchen in the front nook. We've got a small dining table. And then upstairs, we've got a second bedroom and the bathroom. So not a lot to work with. It's actually quite tiny, but this is the size of house that I like to play in. If I were to build a house for me to use to play in for most of my Sims, it would be small like this. I just prefer the like tight and kind of cramped spaces. I will warn you that this probably looks like it might be a starter home. It's not. It is not even close to being a starter home. <laughs> and it also looks like it might have limited packs. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't even have close to being limited packs. Obviously, I primarily used Snowy Escape in the base game because I was mostly using the Snowy Escape furniture kind of on purpose. I wanted to try and use all that stuff because it matched so well, but I, I definitely have a lot of accents and details from other packs. If you don't have that many other packs, you'd be able to download it pretty easily still. It just replaces the items that you're missing. And for the most part, I use a lot of packs, but it's like one item from that pack. So it's like, you know, one decor item or whatever. So it's not the end of the world if you're missing it. If you're missing Snowy Escape, you definitely can't download this. <laughs> it would be like completely empty, totally ruined. I say that because somebody in my Twitch stream was like, oh man, I really want to have this, but you use too much Snowy Escape. And I was like, oh dear, I don't know what to tell you. Snowy Escape's like the whole thing. <laughs> if you're missing that one, then yeah, it's, it's kind of a lost cause. I think my favorite part of this house by far is the kitchen. I think the layout of it is so good. There's like a weird little one by one bump out that I put in this shell because of course I did. I'm trying to make it cursed. <laughs> so it has that weird shape that was very hard to figure out how to roof around and like what to put in there. But I ended up using it inside as like a nook for the fridge. And then there's just a really cute, very tiny kitchen with some bar stools. I put some cute open shelves in there. It looks really nice. And then in this living room, I tried to use that diagonal wall, which I feel like works pretty well in a small space like this because it's kind of a nice L-shaped room, but it's got some diagonals. So it's more interesting. And I put a bookshelf here with a TV in it. I noticed that the TV from Get to Work, it's kind of a weird square TV, which is different. All of the other TVs are, are more of a rectangle shape, but this one is leaning a bit more square and it fits like perfectly inside of the shelf from Snowy Escape. So I tried to use it as like a TV console with the bookshelf. And then I think it looks nice because it almost hides the TV a little bit. Like the TV isn't really the focus of the room. The TV just happens to be in the room and the focus is more on the bookshelf. It's rare that I do that. I think most times when my Sims have a TV, it's like the focal point of the wall. And I don't really love that because TVs aren't that cute. So it's nice to find a place to hide it and then have it look cute. <laughs> so I quite liked that concept. I might try and do it again in another house because I really, I like the hidden TV vibes. It reminds me of some of the people that I've seen on Instagram, that they'll have like the frame TV, but they'll put a gallery wall around it. So it all kind of blends in. It's nice when they do that. The other main thing downstairs is the small little dining nook by the front door. And I put a little kotatsu table right there. I realized that it looks very tight in this house. Like the table is very close to the front door and the staircase. And it looks like it won't work, but don't worry. I play tested it. Your Sims can get around it. Your Sims are surprisingly good at 
that getting into chairs that are close to walls and stairs and stuff, you almost wouldn't expect them to do it as successfully as they do, but they're, they're typically pretty decent when it comes to sneaking into places like that. And then I managed to use the Backyard Stuff rug. There's this really pretty like floral rug from Backyard Stuff and I used that because it has that beautiful blue swatch and I put it underneath the Kotatsu table there. And overall, this like blue with that light wood tone, I think looks so good together. I really, really, really love the color scheme in here. I know, I know, it's blue. Like, of course you like it, Kayla. Everything I build is blue. But in this case, it's like a different kind of blue, right? It's it's special, it's nicer. <laughs> Not the same thing, okay? I also did a kind of interesting thing where I tried to put some built-ins underneath the windows there. I did a lot of built-ins in this house. I used some of the book nook kit to get some cute built-in bookshelves underneath both the downstairs window and the upstairs windows. I like them for storage. It's just kind of cute to have. They're of course not the exact right wood color because that would just be too easy and The Sims 4 is never easy, <laughs> but they are a decent enough light colored wood and I feel like it looks fine. There's like 50 shades of beige going on in here with the blue accents and it works still, so it's okay. The other slight thing that bothers me like the tiniest bit is the fact that the rug underneath the living room is like kind of touching the door. <laughs> it's like kind of touching the corner right there. It's ever so slightly too big. It makes me sad when I look at it, but I understand that I, I can't really move it or fit it anywhere else because it's just too big for the space. It's the Snowy Escape little tiny rug, but sized up. And if it was just ever so slightly smaller, it would fit better. But it, unfortunately it's not. It's, I mean, it's The Sims 4, so you can only do so much. One of the other things that I did was hide a litter box underneath the staircase. I ended up using the laser litter box from My First Pet Stuff because that's one that your Sims don't need to use. Your Sims don't need to access that laser litter box. It just like shoots lasers at the poop and then cleans it. And your Sims cats can still get down there underneath the litter. It's just your human Sims that can't access it. But even if like you did have your human Sims and you need to clean it, you could just move it out in build mode, clean it, and then put it back Back, or like delete it and buy a new one because then you never need to clean it. <laughs> That's kind of my uh, my vibes in The Sims 4. <laughs> we clean enough litter boxes in real life, okay? I have three cats. I don't need to be cleaning my Sims litter box. That's that's just too much for me. And there's no such thing as waste in The Sims. Like if you sell your litter box and buy a new one every time, it's not like it's going to a landfill. It goes to the void. So you can do that. It's fine. <laughs> you don't need to worry about sustainability in The Sims 4. You do in real life and you should. But in The Sims, do whatever you want. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay, but anyway, we're moving upstairs now. I put some built-in bookshelves underneath that window. The upstairs has a very small little staircase area and then it's a tight squeeze with just one bedroom and one bathroom up here. Uh, the bathroom is really tight. I tried really hard to fit a nice like sink, tub, shower, toilet situation. I ended up not having room for a shower, which is less than ideal. I think most times in The Sims I prefer to play with a shower, but I liked how this looked better with just the tub. And this with shell challenges, it's kind of more about looks than it is about playability, <laughs> which sounds so bad, but like I, I am of the opinion that not all of your builds need to be functional. Obviously, best case scenario, they are functional, especially when like I'm making a build for you all because then you might download it and stuff. But you can play The Sims by just building as well. You can build stuff just to build. It doesn't have to work in, in live mode. In the same way, you can, you know, make Sims that you never intend to play with just because you want to use Cass as like a dress up simulator. That's fine. <laughs> you can play however you want. You don't need to have every build be functional. Sometimes if you've got like a really cool idea for how something could look, it, it's fine to have it just look cool and not work properly. This house does work properly. It just doesn't have a shower, <laughs> but it still has a tub, so it's fine. It's just not as fast as showering. But like, sometimes you want to build some kind of cool alien house and have it be like floating and just look cool and that's fine too. This game is a creative outlet, you know? Do whatever you want with it. It's totally fine. Now, speaking of functional, <laughs> this primary bedroom was a real struggle for me. I went back and forth so much in this room to try and figure out where I wanted the furniture to go and like how it should be laid out. I really, really, really had a hard time with this. The main issue was that I wanted to have that really big dresser that comes in Snowy Escape because it's so big, I don't normally use it. And I was like, okay, this is the time. This is the chance to use the big dresser. I love how you can see the folded clothes in it and stuff. So I really, really, really wanted to make it work. I also really, really, really wanted to have a desk and a computer in here because it's so nice to have a computer in your Sims game. And I finally got it, but then the shelf that I had put on the wall next to the bed, it made it so your Sim couldn't get into that side of the bed. So I tried to like flip things around and 
and move stuff and try and redo everything. And I was just so sad about that. I ended up kind of swapping it so you just have the nightstand on one side of the bed and the bed's kind of in the corner of the room up against the wall. This way everything still works, your sims can get in and out of the bed. They do have to scoot to get into one side of the bed and then because of that you can't woohoo in this bed. There's also no shower. So there is technically no woohoo spot in this house. <laughs> <laughs> which is really inconvenient. But you know, if you're playing here, you could you could place a bush outside. You could go to like the onsen and, and woohoo in the sauna, hot springs. I mean, you've got options. I think if it were me and if I had the packs necessary, I would probably just put a bush outside <laughs> and have my Sims woohoo in the bush. But that's, I mean, that's kind of gross. So it's up to you. But I, I just want to warn you, there's no woohoo spot here. The kids room, I had a lot of fun doing. Snowy Escape has some really adorable like like wall prints and like decorative things. And so I got to use a lot of those items. I did struggle with the bed because the bed, the swatch of like the pattern that I wanted to use on the bedspread had a terrible wood color. I did not like the orange wood color. And so I went to great lengths to try and hide it. This was kind of a controversial choice on my Twitch stream. A lot of the chat was like, this is so ugly <laughs> with what I did. But basically I tried to put some built-ins behind the bed and then scoot the bed back into it. Cause then it mostly hid the wooden headboard. And then we got to have like some cute extra built-ins and stuff in the room. It does still work this way. Don't worry. I play tested it. Your Sims head kind of like clips into the bookshelf, just like the tiniest bit, but that's fine. It happens. I think my actual dream in real life would be to have this many built-in bookshelves. <laughs> to have like built-in bookshelves behind your bed would be so cool. This sim is living my dream for sure. But I feel like if I could change anything, I wish that the book note kit bookshelves had maybe some different colors in them. I wish that I had like some slightly brighter colors, but I tried the other swatches of this bookshelf and it just didn't match as well. So I ended up using the light colored ones. I also really had the most annoying time trying to put clutter on that bookshelf. It took me ages to decorate this room. And then I felt like kind of the clutter was taking away from like the serenity of the rest of the house, but it's okay. The kids room is still cute. I still liked it. It's just kind of messy and cluttered in here. <laughs> it's got a lot going on. There's a lot of toys, but it's fun. It's it's cool for like the story. I ended up adding some decorative simi capsules. So these are like the collectible things that you can get from the vending machine in game. One of the ones that I used was the pit beast, which if you have ever seen or played the Sims medieval, you know about the pit beast. <laughs> One of the simi capsules is the the pit beast and so I made sure I had that in here. Funnily enough, I actually built this on stream before the castle kit came out and before I made that Sims Medieval video last week, but I did just recently make a video playing the Sims Medieval. So if you wanna go and watch that, I can link it down below for you. <laughs> so you can go and see the pit beast for yourself because you deserve to know, it's important. For science and also as a fan of the Sims, you need to be well-versed in all things pit beast. It's very important. But anyway, I often like to use these speed builds kind of like a little life up update podcast style space for me to just update you on what's been going on. And here's a fun update on wedding planning. I mentioned a few weeks ago that me and Dan booked like an engagement photo shoot, which is kind of cringe maybe because yes, we did get married two years ago, but that was because of like visa stuff, right? We had a very unconventional situation going on because if you missed it, we filed for a fiance visa in February of 2020, which was very unfortunate timing because after that, we did not see each other for ages. And they also weren't processing the visas because of COVID for ages. And so when he got the visa, finally, you kind of have to be quick about like getting married as soon as he got here. Cause then we get his adjustment of status files, we can get his green card and it's like a whole thing. So we knew that going into it, but also because of COVID, we got married just like at the courthouse and there was border closures. So his parents couldn't come, he's from the UK. So we didn't really have like a, a wedding wedding or like any sort of ceremony or ways to celebrate with family and I've always wanted to do that. We always kind of intended to do that eventually and now is eventually. So we're sort of starting to plan wedding stuff this past few weeks. We booked a venue, we've got a date settled. I would tell you about that, but also I feel like I probably shouldn't. So I'm not gonna tell you about that until later. <laughs> 
maybe afterward. But this week I'm meeting with a wedding planner. I don't know, I'm kind of scared about this. I just don't really know what I'm doing or like where to start. And so I feel like hiring a professional is probably the best bet. Cause like I can't be calling venues. I can barely talk on the phone. So I, I'm just, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna meet with her. I'm gonna be so brave. And I think it's gonna be good. So I'll let you know how that goes. I am in so far over my head. I have no idea how people plan weddings. I know some people like this and they like thrive on event planning. That's not me. <laughs> I'm not. That's not me. <laughs> I do not thrive on this. I'm actually kind of curious. Those of you who have maybe like gotten married recently, had weddings recently, literally ever had a wedding, could you just, what are your thoughts? <laughs> do you have any advice? Anything to say? I don't know. I, I could have, I could use that. <laughs> I could appreciate some uh, first-hand accounts from, from all of you about this sort of thing. I'm curious to know how yours went and like what you all did and stuff. What was your favorite thing that you did at the wedding? Could be a small thing. Stuff like that. That's what I need. I need to copy you. So if you've got any ideas, let me know. I've seen these videos on TikTok of people hiring a wedding painter and it's like an artist that comes and puts their easel up and live paints at the event. They finish it afterward, but they like start it there in front of everybody at the event. And I think that is so cool. I have no idea how expensive that is. I haven't looked into it yet, but I, I think I would love to have that. But I, I mean, it's probably a million dollars. It seems like a very expensive thing to have. I've never checked. So I don't know, but I'm guessing it's bad. Everything wedding is bad though. Everything for weddings is like a million dollars. Oh God. Let's talk about something else. Um, I'm working on the outside of the house now. We're moving on to the backyard and I was really struggling with how to lay this out because it's really small and I knew I wanted to have like a sort of zen garden type of vibe. So I was looking up some reference photos and I think that it just wasn't working well in The Sims. It wasn't translating well enough. So we have this sand texture. It's a floor tile in game that came with Snowy Escape. And it's got some cool circles to it. And I, I wanted to have like some wavy lines or like some circles happening, but because it's a floor tile, it's stuck on the grid. And I wanted mine to be three tiles wide. And of course the circles are like two by two. <laughs> so it just, it wasn't working. I, I couldn't get the, the wavy floor tiles to fit at all. I tried a million ways. And then I was trying like the mossy rugs. I was trying mossy rocks. <laughs> like I, I really did so many things. I tried sizing the rocks up. I thought it looked bad. I ended up putting like some bamboo to line the back and that was good because it made it a bit smaller with the sand, but I kept the smaller rocks instead plus a little tiny fountain. I feel like the vibes of this are probably very nice. It's probably really cozy and like calming back here, but there's not a lot for your sims to actually do in the backyard. It's kind of purely decorative. Most of the backyard space that you can actually use is on the patio. There is a grill and a table on the patio, but otherwise the backyard is kind of just there to look pretty. <laughs> and you can really tell now just how long it took me to figure out where to put this stuff. I swear to you, I tried a million things. I was looking at all these photos online of real life ones and the real life ones are often more like natural looking almost. Like they're kind of more free flowing, they're curvy, and The Sims just doesn't bode well with free flowing and curvy. It's so grid based that it's really hard to make it realistic when I'm trying to do that here. But we are just about done with the building. We're putting on some finishing touches and some last minute details. I'm adding in things like some extra plants and don't worry, I did get all the bases covered. We've got a trash can, we have a mailbox and we do have a thermostat. So it is a fully functional, complete house. I swear it even has a chess table. So you've got all of the things that you could possibly need to have a beautiful functional house. <laughs> but now that we're wrapping this up, I want to pop back into the game and show you a full tour of the finished product. It can be kind of hard to like follow things in a speed build like this. So I want to show you what it looks like when it's actually done. So just to remind you, this is the shell that we started with. This is what it looks like by default. This is kind of the blank slate that everybody had to work with. And if you look on the gallery at the hashtag Simsy Yeehaw shell, don't ask, but if you look on this hashtag, you can see everybody else's builds for the shell. And I think this is really cool because you can just see how different everybody made theirs. There's like modern builds, there's beach huts, there's like dark and scary castle museums. I mean, there's so many different things. This is the beauty of the shell challenge. It just gives people an excuse to be really creative. And I think it's so fun how 
Every single one of these builds is the same box. These are all the same starting walls, just put in different places, rotated differently, decorated differently, and you can't even tell that it's all the same thing for the most part. And I just, I think that's so cool. I love shell challenges. I'm so sorry, I will stop going on and on, but I just, I love doing this. And I built mine in Mount Komorebi. It's meant to go here on this empty 20 by 15 lot. On the gallery, it's called Mount Komorebi Family House. It costs 46,000, almost 40, 7,000 simoleons, two bed, one bath, and like I told you, it uses a million packs. <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed looking at this, but it, look, I uh, have no excuse. I use too many packs, I'm sorry. It looks good though, so that's all that matters, right? <laughs> But this is the fully finished exterior. So when you first walk up to the house, we've got this little tiny walkway that takes you upstairs. We've got a welcome mat. There is a mailbox here on the side. Around the side of the building, we've got like a little bench over here. There's a small back patio this way with like a couple planter boxes. There's a chess table. We've got some more plants. And this is like that back side door. This is kind of nice too, because there's a lot of like walking trails out here in Mount Komorebi. So you can access them from a lot of different angles. I used a ton of snowy escape debug landscaping everywhere. And recently I've been really into using this item. It's called a gathering of garden stones and that's base game. It's base game and in the clutter category. And it's just like some kind of broken stones. I think it looks cute when you just kind of put them in some landscaping places. <laughs> uh, back here in the backyard, we have the trash can out by this back gate. And then this is the fully finished back garden. I did put a little meditation stool right here. And then they've got the Zen garden going this way. I found in debug, this is like a monkey statue. Oh, I went to manage worlds by accident. Of course I did, hold on. <laughs> well, it's a debug monkey statue from Snowy Escape. And I thought it kind of matched and looked kind of cute back there. I had never used that before. I hadn't tried to put that anywhere. So it was kind of fun to find a space for it. These plants are actually from growing together and I like lined them across the whole back. Oh my God, I did it again. Oh, I keep pressing F1 instead of escape. <laughs> this is a disaster. Okay, be careful this time, Kayla. So on the patio back here, we have a small table. I've got like some plants. I did put a bonsai tree because it's a nice skill building item. And there's also a grill over here. And that's the full outdoor space. When you actually come inside, you walk walk right in here into the little dining room area. So we have a radiator because it gets cold in here. We've got the little kotatsu table. This is a hot pot. So your Sims can actually cook in there and use it to make some food. This is that cute built-in bookshelf I was telling you about. My favorite part by far is this kitchen. I love the shape of this space. I love the like built-in fridge. We do have a fire alarm and some little clutter. Your Sims can cook on this counter, so it's still functional. And this item I get asked a lot about, this is actually a spandrel, but it's from Snowy Escape, so it matches perfectly. I did put space for the cat stuff right here by this little kitchen area, and there's not an indoor trash can, but I don't always put those. Sometimes they ruin the vibes, so I just make your Sims use the outside one instead. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but that's how I feel about it. Uh, underneath here, I tried to decorate a bit underneath the stairs. It looks like, weirdly, I deleted the litter box. I don't know why, but I meant for it to be down there. So I'm gonna put it back. I might've had a reason, but I don't know what it was. <laughs> um, over here, this is the living room. We've got that TV built in like I was telling you earlier. I also put this here. There's like a little music speaker. It's kind of floating and for that, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, but I put that there and it does still work. I play tested it so your Sims can listen to music in here. This is the one from Growing Together and for some reason it slots to like nowhere on this shelf, but it's really nice because it's simple and small. Most of the speakers are kind of like a lot. <laughs> so it's nice have some little ones like that. This back here is the kid's bedroom. So I've really decorated it kind of vibrant color scheme wise. We've got a radiator. We've got some toys. We have this cute science table. I love these little decals on the wall. And then I put this thing here because we've got like some coats and backpacks hung up on the skis, which was kind of cute and kind of fits the vibes. Upstairs, we've got a very small little hallway. We do have a thermostat up here and just some storage. This is that tiny bathroom that I was telling you about. I kind of like how the little lines look in here. I think it adds something to it. The wooden matching like the blue of the tile. I don't know. It just kind of comes together. And then this is that primary bedroom. So you've got a double bed, cute shelf with some decor. 
We've got the dresser. I did manage to fit a radiator in here and we have the desk. So not too big, not too much to look at, but fully functional and I think really cute. So hopefully you liked this build. I was quite proud of this one. I, I feel like I need to venture into this style again a lot more because I, I love this. This is like one of my favorite packs and it's been a long time since Snowy Escape came out so I can get over myself. I swear I'm like scarred by the mansion of this world. If you didn't know, I built this uh, and it's like the default lot that comes in here and I'm proud of it, but I've like looked at it so much <laughs> that I've started to dislike it because I, I've like stared at it so long. So it makes me feel embarrassed and kind of makes me not want to build here in Mount Komorebi, but I can't, I cannot let that build hold itself over me, okay? <laughs> I need to get over it. But on that note, I am going to end this video right here. Remember to stay tuned for our next shell challenge. I'm going to post that probably in a couple of weeks here on YouTube and on my Twitch stream. So follow me on Twitch and make sure you're subscribed here so you don't miss it. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'm going to catch you all tomorrow. Okay. Bye everybody. My next speed build is going to be this cool renovated factory industrial loft inspired area. I'm still working on it, but I'm getting kind of excited about it.